you're why am I being interrupted? Because you're in the interview mode, so just stop. But I was trying to alleviate, because, you know, she, she asked to see if there was... There's no, there's, there's no worries here. This is a very yeah. easy process. Why can't he just take a back seat once? You know what I asked him? That yeah, great. You yeah, go well, ahead. Just real quick, don't go no long tirade. Yeah. And I can't remember the question. <laughs> well, it still took him 15 minutes know, for a yes or no answer. <laughs> answer. <laughs> can, you can you describe yourself a little more? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. It's going to be a good process. It would be great. <laughs> Tenacious. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, okay, so go I no, and and I understood the question, and I was going to complete it. Is that I did inquire about getting a list of questions. They won't do, and they won't do that. But first of all, it, it would it wouldn't be accurate or genuine if they exactly. did that. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly, because they really do want to capture right. your natural reaction because it's storytelling. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do some role playing. The Dillon Generation by its owner, Neil Schuster. And what I've got here today are two of their residents. I've got Randy Furr. You say, hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got Tina Shapiro. Hi, Mike. And I've got Neil Schuster, the owner. Howdy, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me start with, let me just start real quickly with you, Neil. Since you brought this to our attention and it seems like a unique idea, could you just tell us briefly, sums up Lake We're Living? It's all about freedom and independence. We are we satisfy the big toy niche, which are motorcycle, which are boomers that love motorcycles, RVs, boats, classic cars, and they can now have a home customized for all their toys. And secondly, even if you don't have a big toy, this is a perfect community if you want to have your own custom home designed the way you want it. So with that said, that's interesting. Let me ask uh, Randy, are you a big toy? Would you call yourself a big toy owner? I never considered myself a big toy owner. However, I have a motorcycle. We want to buy a boat. It's just working out well for us here to have everything we want. From what I've looked at, uh, every gated community has restrictions on parking, on uh, lawn care, on storage. Storage. Tina, would you classify yourself as a big toy owner? No, my husband, oh. my husband and I don't own any toys at the moment. But I think part of our decision was based on if we change our minds, then we have the opportunity to choose what we would like to do. Um, we did look into other communities, and we felt that there were lots of restrictions. We have two dogs, two pets, and so it was very, um, the areas were very gated to what, where we could leave them to, to be outside, and so we felt that there was a lot more freedom here for them, and if we changed our minds somewhere along the line, which we might be, um, we could get a bike and not worry about where we're going to put it, how much it was going to cost us, how much extra, because when you are retired, these things come into play. What were some of the things that you looked at that were most important to you as you retired? And either one of you can answer. Okay. <laughs> you can always say, I'll take this one, Randy. I'll take this one, Randy. <laughs> so, in, in terms of myself, I wasn't really sure if I wanted a full retirement. And then again, to take it a step further, I wasn't sure if I went into one of these gated communities that I researched, if I would feel left out if I was still working to some degree. And so I wanted to be in an environment where I could have the best of both worlds. We were researching a lot of different places for retirement. And, uh, we checked in the villages, it was gated, there were a lot of rules there. My wife had, uh, had come from a farm community. She grew up on a farm. Uh, she likes living in a country setting rather than a city setting. Uh, everything we looked at other than this place was 
a cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. Naturally, when I found out the price difference, that's what swung it for me. So we decided on this and it was a real easy decision. When you say cookie cutter compared to what you have, can you describe to our listeners what, what that is? I mean, I guess most of us, I guess, are used to going down the street and it is a row of houses. What is it that's so different about yours? Our lot is big and it's uh, one third of an acre. Hmm. We like the privacy that we have. We like the space we have. We were able to put on a nice size pool. Yes. You talk about the trees. Too. And, yes. and yes. there's trees all over the place. I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to no. Just rehearse. Okay. Ask me the question again. So <laughs> you said you're on a third of an acre. And most communities are houses one after another. What? Tell me, kind of give me specifically what makes your home so different to somebody else's? Okay, not only being on a third of an acre, we have a approximately 1,200 square foot house. And after doing research in different communities, uh, we found out that we are actually uh, paying less, and by less I mean about half the price as other people have paid in gated communities with a swing. And there are no fees whatsoever. Perfect. And, okay. and you also got a beautiful a side phone that you wanted to. So what kind of people are happening there at your community? What 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 is it that's growing there that makes it so different that's bringing everyone there? Freedom. Freedom? Mm -hmm. it, Tina, elaborate on that. That's wonderful. <laughs> The freedom of choice, the freedom uh, to decide how you want your kitchen to look. If you don't like a wall where it is, you can move it. In other places I looked at, they told me I could change what I wanted to change, but I would have to change it after the home was built. So in other words, I would have carpeting that would be this color. If I didn't like it and I wanted a different flooring, I would have to do that after I was moved in. Would that be good for her to bring up that she used to live in a community like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I think so. That would be good. I do. Yeah. I do think that that's actually she's that's experienced really it. She knows. You could say, you know, you could somehow interject that when you talk about why you chose it because you've already done it HOA. I've done it. Been there. That was really a big part of the reason because that's a good point. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to do that again. I mean, it was it, it just was like we right. didn't want to do that right. anymore. We never. You never know. Been there, done that. You never know when it's going to go up. And you can't do anything about it. it. No, you can't. It Look. comes in the mail, yep. and it just says it. And then you're like, and there's nothing you can do. No. And the older the place gets, the higher the fee is because more One. things tend to break. Right, they have to fix them. Oh, it's just a special assessment. Special assessment. Uh, um, what, what did he say the fees were per month? Three, four hundred a month? Oh, my God. Uh -huh. He said, that's not the worst of it, he says. They just came out with a $6,000 special assessment because they had to redo a bunch of stuff. Oh, it, it, doesn't it, doesn't it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. You know what it is also? And you have no choice. you got to pay it. They call, it's like rat on your neighbor. If your neighbor has something and like they don't like, they're just very quiet about it. Mm -hmm, oh. mm -hmm. The neighbor can write to the association and say, oh, like we have, people could build a deck but they couldn't have a fence. So my next door neighbor put a fence. I didn't say anything, but somebody said, well, if he's got, we wanted a fence two years ago. If you're gonna let him have a fence, then we want to have a fence. Oh. With us is uh, Tina Shapiro and Randy Ferk. And, oh, is this Mike? I, I, I love the Badgers. <laughs> I, I have loyalties and I, I'm loyal to my loyalties. Uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Beloit, very good. Very good. So is this, Mike, is this all going to work out okay now that the two of you are from Wisconsin but different schools? That there won't be any tension, will there? <laughs> no, no, no Michigan. <laughs>
Great. Well, we appreciate um, the opportunity. Thank you very much for inviting us. This is Neil Schuster from Lake Weir Living. Hi, I'm Randy. Hi, Mike. I'm Tina Shapiro. So I should mention I uh, came to New Jersey, actually, via New York. So I'm really a, a New York person. I'm a metropolitan city girl. And uh, my husband and I decided that we wanted to get out of the city life and come to a place that was more stress-free. And we started investigating different alternatives or different types of uh, communities that we could live in. We actually, when we lived in New Jersey, we lived in a townhome development where we had homeowner association fees. And so when we started looking, I guess it was a natural pull to see if we could get something that didn't have homeowner association fees where we could have the freedom to choose and customize a home for ourselves. And so, mm -hmm. Well, there are a couple of reasons for Florida. First of all, we were tired of the snow, or I was tired of the snow. My husband wasn't tired of the snow. And um, as you can understand, as retirees, uh, there's no income tax in the state of Florida. So that was very attractive to us because of my husband was a, a teacher in New York City. So that would enable us not to pay income tax on his pension. Well, uh, I met my wife about 30 years ago, and she made me promise we would move to a warm weather climate. And as re uh, retirement approached, I said, it's time to fulfill my promise, and uh, here we are. Funny story, I was sitting in the uh, dentist's office thinking about retirement, and it was approaching real quickly. And I opened a magazine, and I saw an article uh, where, uh, where to retire, and there was an ad here for uh, Lake We're Living. And it fit the bill for us because it was not a gated community. There were no homeowners fees. Uh, and my love in my life, other than my wife, is uh, motorcycling. And I wanted an open floor plan. So I, not, I was able to say, I don't want this wall here. I want an open kitchen. And I was able to do exactly what I thought I wanted. And even in the middle of the, the construction, if I wanted to change something or tweak something, I was able to do it. So that made a big difference for me. Mike, this is Neil. I thought I'd just interject um, about your question about customization. We are so custom that you could bring your own floor plan to us. For decades, it's been these, these um, projects that are gated and golf course, HOA restricted projects. Um, and we are the opposite of that. The point of this is to educate uh, the uh, boomer population, uh, which we appreciate this opportunity, that there are alternatives um, coming online. There are which what is called niche communities, which we fall into. We're a niche community. Part of the American dream for a lot of people is have the ability to uh, truly customize their dream home. In the next 10 years, he would be married with children. I wanted him to have the freedom to come and go as he pleased and know that this was a place that he could come, not for two weeks or three weeks, but he could stay extendedly. And that was a big part of the decision making for us. Well, Generation Dylan is really is the boomer generation. Um, he's the iconic figure of the 60s. Um, and as we develop and create uh, our concepts and the way we market and promote our community, Honestly, I, I look to uh, Dylan as inspiration. In fact, Bob Dylan, when he was younger and still uh, as, he, as he aged, he wrote a Harley. The Generation Dylan concept, which I, I coined, is, is really just another way of talking about a subset of baby boomers that want freedom. 30 million boomers, 30 million boomers love big toys. That's a big number compared to only 9 million that play golf. I will do that. Thank you, Mike. So come on down for a visit, Mike. Thank you. All right. That was... Are we off the air? Now All right, are. there you go. <laughs> Yay!
good well, job. I, that was really awesome. Good. Yay, right. good okay. job. High fives, everybody. High, right. fives. High fives. High fives. High fives. Yay. High five to you and, and Bruce. High five. <laughs> High five to Bruce. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Just out of curiosity, how does your pricing for uh, the lots up there compare to what it would be over at uh, Let's Yeah, I wish you'd have brought that up. Yeah. Because it's the other like, thing oh, I wanted to say, and I did with my little pink really house. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we're really half it's the price real. to yeah. uh, two thirds. And they have an HOA yeah. association and fees that are yeah. go along with any and, fees and a bond. Price. So good. Yeah. yeah. Feel good. Yeah. Well, good. you did. You both did really great. I can't thank you enough. Would you tell us if we did it? I would absolutely. You did get a, a still picture of me with the headphones. Yep, on. I got some pictures for you. But you guys did really good. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It was you. really. Thank it you. Was, it went great. You He's know, for our first everybody. time doing this on a radio, yeah. it was yeah. great. Yeah. And you didn't do. You didn't do so bad. You oh, cut yourself. They're, they're not that expensive. You cut yourself. About twenty five. My husband. You cut yourself. That was good. You cut yourself off. Yeah, I, I curtailed. Yeah. I curtailed my closeness. Yep. And you know, it's, it's all about them speaking. Three. All right, oh, you cheat. Okay, who's last? 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 Who's